700 years ago, history diverged. In the new timeline, America was never colonized and the indigenous people went on to develop vast technologies and spiritual advancements to create their own solar punk civilization. Here we have the new unique TTRPG, Coyote and Crow. I highlighted this game along with many others in my most recent non-OGL TTRPGs videos, which you can see here, or no, here, yeah. And with your comments, many of you wanted to know more about it. So I reached out to the developers and asked if they could send me a review copy for all of you. And I will go over briefly what this book is all about, how the game is played and how to create a character. And if you want to purchase the book, you can find an affiliate link in the description as well as a link to their website. But it all started in the event called Awis or The Darkest Night. An event so terrible that even the great spirit had to abandon her people to learn to survive on their own. But to help her people survive the coming years, she created great gifts and allowed Crow, a lesser spirit, to bring these gifts to all of the tribes. These gifts being wisdom, knowledge, and technology in order to navigate the natural disasters and monstrous changes to the wildlife. Among the earth, people, and plants, a strange purple marking appeared called the Adanadi, a gift that grants people supernatural abilities beyond normal human parameters. The people eventually flourished again in the land they now call Makasin. And as I said in the beginning, this land is an alternate future of America with the intention of zero colonization influence in the growing culture of Native Americans. I think one great example is the map of this land, which is actually the upside down version of the map of America that we are familiar with. If you want me to go in depth in another video about the different regions, tribes, and other phenomena of this land, let me know in the comments below. If this video gets a lot of likes and views, then it tells me that it's definitely something that more of you want to see. But probably one of the things that impressed me right out of the gate was a forward for both Native Americans and non-Native players. The first to implore Natives to incorporate their heritage and history freely within the story of Coyote and Crow. This book was created to give Native American artists, game developers, and players to be at the heart of the game. The second forward was a caution to avoid cultural appropriation for those not of Native American descent, but also an invitation to enjoy the culture and stories of a people not familiar to them. This is still a game for everyone, but you won't find things like the Christian calendar, traditional firearms, cows, chickens, pigs, or coffee, and anything else that was the cause of European influence. Now, I will say also that your story does not have to reflect real world history or an alternate version thereof. It can also reflect an entirely different reality or fantasy. One similar story of tribal civilizations with expanded technology is the Horizon franchise of games. A post-apocalyptic world where tribes fight with mechanical versions of the animals they are familiar with from dormant AI technology. Come up with your own world where spirituality meets technology set in Makasing, Horizon, or another world you conjure up from your mind. As far as the actual game goes, it is a tabletop role-playing game, in similar genre to games like Dungeons & Dragons or Call of Cthulhu, but instead of a game master, the game is run by a story guide that takes a similar role. You will be playing with multiples of the 12-sided dice and no other dice as the people of Moccasing see the number 12 as sacred. A success is granted when a single d12 rolls higher than the success number. If you're coming from D&D, a DC or difficulty class, it has the same mechanic. But in Coyote and Crow, you roll a number of d12s equal to your skill. So if you have a score of six in science, then you roll six dice for the check, possible for you to get six successes. They'll roll a natural one and subtract an additional success from your pool. Roll a 12 and it's a critical. So roll the same amount of dice equal to the number of 12s you rolled. Every number you roll below the success number counts as one success and every number over it counts as two two successes. Do this over and over until you don't roll a 12. You can also subtract from your mind stat in order to focus in and add to a rolled number the amount you subtracted from your mind. But be careful because those areas can also act as your health. So you can also subtract one dice from your pool before you roll for the extra plus one on another single dice when you roll it. It's another option. The success number can also be raised and lowered depending on the equipment and abilities you have. By default, success numbers are always eight, but can be changed. And the story guide may have different outcomes to how many successes you roll within your pool. But technically, all you really need is one success in order to complete a task. In combat, one success equals one point of damage. Simple. And if you have no successes, it is considered a fail. And it is the story guide's opportunity to create a consequence, like dropping your weapon or locking yourself out of a computer hack. 
If you don't want to keep track of all that dice, you can use Coyote and Crow's own mobile app to roll for you. Combat may also be familiar in structure to D&D players having initiative, primary and secondary actions, all done in rounds, except players get to choose their initiative equal to or less than their score, and movement is a secondary action, but not grid or distance based, but rather switching from melee, short, medium, and long range positions. And any character can make as many secondary actions as they would like during their turn, so long as they aren't the same ones. Additionally, each player has the option to change their initiative every round. So now that we got the basic sound, let's build a character together. Starting with the name, I went with Genesee, an explorer by heart obsessed with artifacts and locations of the old world. A free name generator is on the website if you struggle with names like me, but you start off with 22 motivations to choose from or make your own. Each just provides a basis for your personality and role playing. Things like wealth, love, or justice. Personally, I chose for my character to be mainly driven by curiosity. You are next then given archetype choices, which are more like backgrounds in my opinion, but those archetypes are warrior, scout, tinkerer, seeker, healer, and whisperer. If I had to give them D&D counterparts for those more familiar with that system, you might have fighter, rogue, artificer, ranger, cleric, and bard but only at the role play level as each archetype only gives you a simple boost to one stat and one skill. I chose Seeker as I see this character being very curious about old ruins and lore filled locations. After other identifiers are made, you can choose your path. This is your spiritual path and act as your class and or subclass. There are 15 paths, each named after an animal spirit like Path of the Bison or Path of the Beaver. Again, giving you bonuses in two predetermined stats. I chose the Path of the Falcon because it gave me a boost in perception and spirit stats. I am then granted a supernatural ability from that spirit. Each spirit gives you a choice of six gifts that you can choose from related to your boosted stats. For this one, I chose Walk the Black, which is kind of an astral projection power. I thought this could allow me to get into hard to reach places when I am investigating locations. As the campaign progresses, characters don't level up, but can make short-term and long-term goals that indicate stats that get boosted or abilities earned over a predetermined number of sessions. But now we look at the fun part, gifts and burdens. This one puts mechanical power in the hands of the players. You basically choose a perk and a bane of your own imagination and assign levels one, two, or three to it. Level one means it's a minor gift or burden that happens occasionally. Level three means it's very powerful or very debilitating. You start out with five points to spend on total levels, but giving yourself burdens gives you more points to spend on gifts. For example, I made up Script Savant, which takes two off of success numbers when I roll language skill checks because I chose second level. Wanting a point back, I choose an unnatural terrain burden where because my primal path is a falcon, my ability to influence animals while underground is at disadvantage. Adding one to success numbers with the husbandry skill, but I chose to leave my total of four points left and bring it over to my pool of points for my stats and skills. And with both stats, and skills each have a total of 42 points plus your leftover gifts and burdens points to use. So my total is 46. Purchasing points for each of stats and skills is not one for one, but available to see the conversion through provided tables. Kind of like the regular point buy system. Your stats inform your initial skill scores, and then you can use your second pool of 42 to buy points to further rank those skills, landing on total dice pool for your skill checks. Each of the skills correspond to two stats, but always pull from the lower stat unless you have at least one rank in the skill, then it pulls from the highest stat. Finally, you can't forget to add my additional points from archetype and path. Remember, your defenses come from three categories of physical, mental, and spiritual defenses, which are just your armor class split three ways, calculated by your last two stats in each line. Your health in each category are calculated by adding all three together and can fluctuate throughout play. The last thing you do is choose your equipment, which can ultimately be up to you and the story guide, or you can pick three items of wealth rank four or less, and then one item from wealth rank five or less. From what I can tell, there is no gold or money system, but you can move up a wealth rank each session and can spend your wealth rank for items of equal or less value. As far as TTRPGs go, this seems like a really fun and unique game. 
but I think where it shines is the cultural hole it fits and a storytelling focus that reflects that of Native American oral tradition. Not to mention this is also available on both Foundry VTT and Roll20 if you want to play it online. If you want a PDF or physical copy, you can find it through my affiliate link below or on their website, both linked in the description. If that is even too much for you, you can find a free rules light version with an adventure and pre-generated characters on their website as well. If there is another TTRBG that you want me to highlight from my other videos that I mentioned before, let me know. But for now, check out my newcomer's guide to D&D video, which feedback is that it is the best video to explain to your non-nerdy parents what you do on the weekends. But unfortunately, I published it all when this OGL drama hit, so uh, when everyone didn't want to play D&D. Yeah, so go give it some love, and hey, I'll see you in the next one.